we're going to be doing a hammer toe repair by PIP arthroplasty using the Arthrex minimally invasive instrumentation and the 2.5 millimeter compression FT screws. We have a right foot. There's a flexion contracture of the PIP joint and we're going to address the hammer toe by addressing that flexion contracture. Using the beaver blade that's part of the Arthrex MIS instrumentation set, we're going to make an incision through the extensor mechanism over the dorsum of the PIP joint, entering the joint as best we can. I'm taking care not to affect the medial and lateral neurovascular bundles. First we use the 2 by 8 millimeter uh, Shannon burr. This is going to create a pocket in our joint to accept the larger 2.9 millimeter wedge burr. So I can feel the burr going into the joint. You can do this under fluoroscopic guidance if you're not familiar with the feel. Next we're taking the 2.9 millimeter wedge burr. The wedge burr is different than the Shannon burr in that instead of cutting bone, it's actually designed to remove bone. And we're going to remove bone from both the proximal phalanx by some gentle pressure on the proximal phalanx and a sweeping motion with a little bit of rotation. And we're going to remove burr from the middle phalanx with a little distal pressure, a sweeping motion, and a little bit of rotation. Next, we're going to use the 0.86 millimeter guide wire. This is the guide wire that accepts the drill for the 2.5 millimeter compression FT screw. I'm going to put this guide wire down into the intramedullary canal of the proximal phalanx. Because the overall alignment of the toe is going to be contingent upon our drilling and the position of our screw, I'm going to check this under fluoroscopy. So on the AP image, we can see good placement of the guide wire down the intramedullary canal. It's also important to check on the lateral image. And you can see it's right down the shaft. The other thing we see on the AP image is that our joint is unevenly prepared. So we're going to have to remove a little bit more bone from the lateral part of the joint. And that can be done in subsequent steps. So next we're going to use the 2.0 millimeter cannulated drill that prepares the intramedullary canal for the 2.5 millimeter compression FT screw. And I'll do this as the positive stop will be my um, proximal cortex of the proximal phalanx. You could drill through, so you do need to use some care in doing this. Next, we're going to place in a retrograde fashion the 0.8 millimeter guide wire for the 2 millimeter drill so that we can prepare the middle phalanx. We're going to send this out ideally through the tip of the distal phalanx because once again, our overall alignment is going to be contingent upon our guide wire placement and our drilling. I'm looking at my position here and it looks good, but it's really important to check this under fluoroscopy. So on the AP plane, the position's great, particularly with regards to the middle phalanx. On the lateral plane, we can see we're completely lined up appropriately within the middle phalanx. Using the beaver blade, I'm going to cut an incision for exit of the drill bit and insertion of the screw at the tip of the distal phalanx around the exit point for the guide wire. Now we're going to drill antegrade through the middle phalanx and out the distal phalanx using the 2 millimeter cannulated drill. If you recall, we had a little bit of excessive bone on the lateral side of the proximal phalanx. So we're going to preferentially remove a little bone there. And I can literally, I can hear, and I'll be able to feel when the appropriate amount of bone is removed. We can see now that the joint is appropriately prepared. So then by hand, we're going to replace the K-wire, integrate through the middle and distal parts of the toe, and then retrograde through the proximal phalanx. But once again, I think it's really important to check this fluoroscopically. So here, this is going to be the final position of our toe, which is satisfactory in the AP plane and then in the lateral plane. And you can see it's in the middle and proximal phalanges on the lateral plane as well. I don't typically measure this screw. I almost always use a 26 millimeter, 2.5 millimeter compression FT screw. Uh, if it's a really short toe, I might go down to a 22. You can see when I insert the screw, there's a tendency for the distal phalanx to rotate. It's important to correct that rotation 
during insertion of the screw and I do that manually. I'll check the position on fluoroscopy and then finish this by hand. When you start getting compression across the joint, it's particularly important to hold rotation of the toe because even though clinically it probably doesn't cause much problem, patients are very dissatisfied if their toe is malrotated. There's your final fluoroscopic image in the AP plane and here's your image in the lateral plane. Frequently, with a hammer toe deformity, I'll perform a metatarsal phalangeal joint release. I'll either palpate the joint, or if I can't palpate the joint, then I'll mark the joint um, using fluoroscopy. I'll take the beaver blade, and I'll go almost directly into the joint, make sure that I cut the long extensor, and then I'll come in and I'll also cut the short extensor, putting some gentle plantar flexion pressure on the toe, and you feel a satisfying release once you've been through the tendons. In addition to the tendon release, sometimes you have to release the collateral ligaments off the base of the proximal phalanx, and that can be done through the same incision by gently turning your blade, directing it distally, with care taken to prevent injury to the adjacent neurovascular bundle. And continue sequential releases until you have adequate release of the uh, dorsiflexion contracture at the MP joint. For the purposes of this demonstration, we didn't use the irrigator, but every time I'll do the surgery in a live fashion, I will use the irrigator. And you can see the irrigator delivers a constant flow of saline to the field to decrease temperature and decrease the risk of thermal necrosis.